China continues to spread across the globe, many more are becoming infected and some even dying. As of making this video, 132 people have died worldwide, with over 6,000 infected in China alone. I got these drugs in my system and I'm still trying to take the pain away. I don't need nobody trying to change my ways. Step in this phase, I'm dying slowly trying to count my days. I don't change, that's my fault. The time I got it, where it rest in me, a felony. All my nigga rest in peace, remember me. Actually happens to your body if you contract the coronavirus. Now, before we get into it, we want to make clear that this video is in no way intended to spread fear or over sensationalize the severity of the coronavirus. We won't be commenting on its global threat level because that information is constantly changing while experts monitor its spread. But what we will be looking at is how the coronavirus actually infects the body, what it does inside of you, and then how it causes symptoms, spreads, how your body actually then fights it off, or it causes death inside. Cur all right, so that's what I really want to know about the coronavirus. Everybody else, we're just talking about all this extra information. This actually, that's why I, that's why I mess with ASAP Science. I used to visit them all the time when I was younger just to find out the information about all types of stuff like lucid dreaming and stuff like that. So they really, they really be having that information, information for real, for real. Coronaviridae are actually an entire family of viruses that cause disease in mammals and birds. SARS, for example, was also a coronavirus. Now, viruses are interesting in that they are sometimes considered both living and non-living things. They aren't made of cells, but they do have the ability to replicate, just in a different way than other organisms. Oh, and they're actually much, much smaller than cells. Now, to contract the coronavirus, you first have to come in contact with it, either through an infected person's respiratory secretion, so a cough or a sneeze, through physical contact with them or by physically touching a surface that the virus is on and then touching somewhere like your nose or your mouth before washing your hands. Once the virus is able to enter your body, its work can begin. One thing that all viruses have in common is that they carry some kind of genetic material, either DNA or RNA. In the case of coronavirus, it carries RNA, which has all the information the virus needs to replicate. The genetic information in a virus is typically surrounded by a protective capsid. You may picture this when you think of a virus, and it yeah. is a virus, but this is a virus that attacks bacteria, also known as a bacteriophage. In the case of the coronavirus, the RNA is encased in a helical capsid, and then that helical capsid is actually encased in an envelope. It looks more like this, kind of like the emoji of a virus. And these projections coming out of the surface or the club-like structures are very important for what happens next. Once the virus comes in contact with your cells, it binds to receptors on that cell. You can think of the outer layer of the virus like a key. And if the virus has found the right cells in the right species, its keys are able to open the lock on these cells. As a result, the virus is able to enter where it now has access to all the cell's machinery. Now, normally, this machinery is reserved for your own DNA. So that'd be taking over the human body once and stuff. Bro, this is like, uh, uh, yeah. I swear this is man-made. Which uses something called ribosomes to make proteins that have all sorts of functions and travel all over that your body. That looks creepy. But the coronavirus ends up hijacking the system. It uses its own RNA to go to those ribosomes and starts making proteins that it wants. So basically your cell starts producing viruses by making the genetic material, by making the capsid and envelope, and ultimately your cell becomes a virus-making machine. And this is why viruses are often considered non-living, because they don't actually have the machinery to do this work, they actually need your body's cells to do it. So the coronavirus has its RNA instructions read over and over and over and makes protein after protein after protein and ultimately can make millions of viruses. These viruses eventually fill the cell and make their way back to the cell membrane where they break out, often destroying the cell in the process. Once out, it's on to the next cell to repeat this cycle all over again. Now, as your cells begin to get damaged and die, your body will sense this and start to trigger an immune response. And both of these things are what will create these symptoms that you begin to feel. In the case of the coronavirus, these symptoms include headaches, runny nose, coughing, sore throat, and fever, which is part of the reason why it's been so hard to track and understand because those are common symptoms. We feel those all the time, especially during flu season or just from getting the common cold. Medical professionals would need to do laboratory tests on respiratory specimens as well as blood work and blood tests to understand if your symptoms are coming from the Wuhan coronavirus. 
In a healthy individual, the immune system will eventually realize that there's a foreign agent inside. So, you saying, I, I really don't know what they're talking about. It seems a lot complicated. Well, it's really not that complicated. So, the cell, it enters your cells. Your cells, repro like, pretty much copies it and pretty much, like, lets that out. And, yeah, it just kind of spreads to your body. So that's where I'm getting it from. What y'all getting it from? Let me know. At your body and mount an attack. The immune system is incredibly complex with a plethora of different mechanisms to take down your invaders. Your temperature increases, which helps your immune system function better and actually makes it a more hostile environment for the virus. You might create more snot and phlegm, which make it harder for the virus to attach to your cells and also help to get rid of dead viruses and immune cells. You may feel weak and tired as your body starts to prioritize fighting off this virus instead of doing your regular day-to-day -day activities. And your bones may actually feel sore and ache, and that's because they're actually making more white blood cells. For its mainline defense, when the coronavirus is detected, the body triggers signals to start producing antibodies. These antibodies are created by your own DNA. There are essentially sections of code in each cell's DNA that contain the instructions of how to build different defense systems. Enzymes in the nucleus find the right section of DNA. So your body is literally like a like a military base on and stuff. Like it's literally like creating little soldiers to fight these infections, these viruses. That's that's neat, bro. It, bro, it's it's crazy how the body is just so complicated and it's like Bro, there's so much to this, it's crazy. Make a copy called messenger RNA, which gets messenger. sent to the ribosome in your cells, which will read these instructions and start making the relevant proteins. With up to 10 million ribosomes in each cell, they become an antibody-making factory, which are sent outside of the cell to fight the virus. The trickiest part for your body is that the immune response doesn't catch the virus right away. So essentially, the virus starts with an upper hand. This is why it can take so long for your body to fight off a virus. But for coronavirus, those with healthy immune systems should be able to fight off and rid the body of the virus within weeks. The problem is Oh, uh, so we really straight. It's not it's not such a big deal like they're making this thing. That's why I really feel like it's man made, because it's not living, but at the same time it is living. So like bro, I feel like really I feel like the government really made that just to kinda lower the um lower the population, also put fear into everybody. That's how I feel, to be honest have compromised immune systems, which is often people who are elderly or people who are very young. This particular coronavirus has mostly affected the elderly, and that's because as we age, our immune systems become less effective and they actually slow down. As the virus continues to proliferate and cells continue to die, in a desperate attempt to save your body, your immune system can go into overdrive. In severe cases, white blood cells are responsible for activating a variety of chemicals, which can cause the leaking of fluid into your lungs. And this combination of cellular destruction from the virus and fluid-filled lungs interrupts the transportation of oxygen into the bloodstream, which can lead to suffocation and organ failure. But the virus isn't always the cause of death. Often, with a weakened and distracted mm. immune system, other organisms like bacteria are able to take advantage of the body, causing further complications. As organs begin to shut down, the whole body can as well. To reiterate, it's the immunocompromised that are most at risk. And even with that, it's worth saying that the numbers are relatively low. If you think about it, 40,000 people died of the flu in the U.S. alone last year. And over a million people died of heart disease. On top of that, the death rate right now is being estimated between 2 and 3%, which is continually evolving. But a disease like SARS was a death rate of 10%, and Ebola in some regions has been up to 50%. All this to say, don't allow the news to make you panic. We live in Toronto where the SARS virus got world-scale attention. That's because the only people who died outside of Asia from that virus were in Canada. And most of them were in Toronto. With only 44 people Toronto. dying in total in Canada, it had a huge impact. Of course, Toronto, where Drake is from, they're not built like that. They're not built like on our city. We lost a lot of tourism. We lost millions of dollars. But most importantly, we saw a lot of stigma and racism towards Chinese people. It's important that we do not repeat those racist notions that happened here in Toronto, and we all need to be aware of this when we talk about the current coronavirus. 
Thanks. On our social media channels, we have seen lots of people saying things like, this always happens in China, and we're relating it a lot to the types of foods. Bro, you can't really blame it on like, a race, fam. It's more like a little bit environmental and some stuff. Like, you, you live in like a... Let me not even speak on it. Let me let, let, let me let them talk. Because they know what they're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to let them talk. To listen to and trust public health professionals. And we need to not overreact. And we need to not use this as an excuse to be racist. If you like these videos, make sure that you have subscribed. But Mitch, we have some news. Yes, we have also started a little mailing email list with a link below. Because, you know... Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and end it there because we're not there for it. We ain't here for that. We here to learn about the coronavirus and yeah, we're here for that. We ain't here for all that. But make sure you go subscribe to ASAP Science because they be putting out a lot of good information about all types of subjects and things that you probably will want to know about. So go like, subscribe, hit that notification bell on my channel and do the same on their channel because they be lit. But I'll see y'all next time. See you safe. Full pack on game. <laughs>